Oh, hello. Oh, sorry. Um, hello, my uh, fragrance lovers and my good uh, smelling companions. <clears throat> Dominic here for another um, fragrance review. Uh, today, we're going to be unboxing the Penhaligon's samples. Okay, um, so here's a look at the box. It's nice. Um, we have 10 samples here of the well, it, the 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 uh, what we're looking at is Penhaligons, and it's um, they're this very English sort of um, uh, house of perfumes, right? And <clears throat> they're kind of uh, attached to the whole royal family kind of thing, and that's kind of where a lot of the inspiration uh, seems to have come from. Um, so, um, and <clears throat> they were established in 1870. It'll say that on, on the box. So we've got the, the two mil samples and there's 10 of them. Uh, so you can get a little box of these. All right, so what we're going to have a do is, um, I might do this in a series of videos. Um, so uh, because there's 10 of them, I may take three at a time and sort of sniff and compare each one. And that'll go over the course of maybe about three videos, but we'll see. Um, but with the, then there's still another one left over if we do that. So we'll just take the first one. Um, and we'll have a look at that one. Um, so anyway, inside the box, it's a nice layout, um, nice presentation. Let's see, look at all our beautiful perfume samples right there. Okay, and it looks like they have the kind of coloured ones standing out in the middle, so nice uh, um, presentation. Um, and we've got this beautiful little, well, it's like a book booklet, but it actually just folds out to one big thing. Um, Pen Halligans. And look at the... Um, quality already you can see on there the, um, as well as uh, as on the box um, you know you've got the, these crescent things here going on um, so uh, let's just have a look here and open it up and um, so fine perfumers established yes 1870 so um, in, in, in the beginning they'll give you this little uh, introduction which says um, welcome to the wonderful world of Penhaligons Take a seat, enjoy a cup of fine English tea. Don't worry, we have that sorted. Uh, and prepare your nostrils for a scented experience to remember. Okay, that's what we are going to do in this video. And I'll be sipping on a little bit of tea now and then. Okay, um, let's take a look at our first sample, shall we? I think we will. All right, so what we get for today is this one is Impressa. Okay, uh, they say they're only two mil samples. It looks like a little more than a two mil, but anyway, that's what it seems to say. Um, I can prove it to you on the box. So it says 10 times two mil, which is 0 0.6 floor ounces. Right, um, so shall we have a look at Empressa? This is uh, the one that we'll be doing for today and hopefully we'll get on to the others another time, all right? So before we go, let's uh, prepare the nostrils, sip some English tea. Right, I'll show you the bottle design. As always, this is what it's gonna look like. See the uh, the sheer quality of the um, with that kind of global kind of like uh, spherical top uh, linked to um, the rest of it, which then has usually they'll have this lovely little bow, a little ribbon on it, which really just makes it for me, I think. And then you get these crescents, and then the kind of the goldish with the with the white background. Uh, the bottle designs are nice and elegant. They start kind of a bit stout at the top and they thin out a bit towards the bottom. They're usually um, shaped like this. Those kind of things, all right. Um, that's often what our beautiful bottles of Penhaligons will look like. Now, um, you see there's a little bit of confusion with Penhaligons. Um, I've heard that they can be sort of unisex, pretty much, all of them. And then I've also heard if you look on sometimes you're buying one like for this, it would probably say women's perfume, right? This one here, Impressa. I mean, uh, as we read through, you'll see that it is indeed uh, all about, you know, feminine traits. Okay, so we are just going to sort of um, 
I might have to do a little bit more research. Maybe those who know uh, a bit about Penhaligons uh, might be able to, to tell me uh, which ones are um, more the um, perhaps more masculine, which ones are really are just unisex, and which ones are feminine, because it does get a little confusing sometimes. Um, like Helfetti, for example, is one of their is one of the best. I mean, it's uh, definitely one of their expensive ones, uh, and and that's about kind of when they went to Turkey and you know. And it's kind of some a little bit sort of exotic or whatnot. It's sort of um, but I mean to me it could be it's probably a men's one, but then you could probably just um it's probably just a nice kind of scenty thing. And then there's one called Juniper Sling. I mean I won't be doing spoilers here, but um Juniper Sling is kind of um the theme is kind of like cocktails and gin and that kind of thing. Who knows? I mean that, that could be kind of a bit of both. It could be more masculine. But um, anyway, today's one we have got is Impressor, so let's have a look at this, and um, yeah, let's, um, should we just do the sample first, and then we'll have a, a little read of these, um, this little uh, info that it gives us, and I'll just kind of, uh, I think my nose is prepared sufficiently, we better finish off this. Okay. So here we are. We're going to open the sample and we're going to um, get a little whiff of Empressa. Oh. <laughs> hey. Already the aromas are immediately coming straight out of this little thing. Um, we need to get a bit more of this on because this is this is absolutely this is divine. This is lovely. Yeah. Wow, no, that's, uh, I don't think I've smelled anything like it before. Whew, wow, that's powerful. It's got a lot of power to it. It's got a lot of character. Oh, beautiful. Whew, yeah, I mean, it, I suppose it is feminine, I guess, but I mean, it's, um, oh, it's a shame because I'd like to wear this. <laughs> no, I mean, well, I mean, I'm just getting first impressions, and right now it's just, um, yeah, I guess it's floral. It's got that moist floral. It's got um, what else has it got? It's um, probably got some of the usual stuff: the patchouli, the um, um hmm. Ah, could have lots of things. This one, I mean, it's um, it's vibey, it's strong. I'm sure it has something fruity. It definitely has something woody, spice. I'm getting as well a bit of maybe. Um, yeah, it's, it's got this kind of life and vividness to it. Um, uh, also, th these are all always supposed to be characterized by very, very kind of um, English, and, and it, especially in the way that they express the, the fragrances, right? So, um, pretty adorable first impressions. Um, oof, yeah, no, I'm, that is absolutely beautiful. Um, looking forward to seeing what they say about this one. So let's have a little read. Okay, um, as one would as one would expect uh, of a, of an empressa. Uh, she travels in style, all abundant pearls, mirrors and fine silks. Like her scent, she leaves a seductive and lasting impression, but her noble airs are clothed elegantly in grace. Florals and fruits are exquisitely combined. Yeah, I thought it was floral and fruity and, um, yeah. Um, tamed, because whilst she is... Sweet, she is anything but clingy. Okay. <laughs> right, so, yeah, tamed, it says, yeah. Well, uh, I'm getting a lot of sort of floral and fruitiness. Maybe they'll go into more detail as to what exactly is in this thing. Uh, so, Middle Eastern rose, wow, okay, from Damascus, makes the fragrance tender. So, you got Middle Eastern rose from Damascus. Really nice. Uh, geranium and pepper bring verve, which is kind of inspiration and enthusiasm, you know, verve. Um, brilliant. So yeah, we, I've come across geranium before in fragrances. Um, I like that um, yeah, <coughs> eastern rose from Damascus. That's very nice. Um, the opening trilogy of blood orange, bergamot and mandarin serve as an inviting radiant smile. Okay, so we have um, opening trilogy, if you don't mind, of blood orange, bergamot, and mandarin. 
Okay, so those are their um, sort of going in with the, um, the fruitiness of this one, right? Um, but what lingers of the Empressa are the sensual depths of amber, patchouli, and precious woods. Okay, so we're getting amber, patchouli, and precious woods. As I said, there's bound to be some patchouli in it. Um, wow, it's very rich. It's very, very fine. It's very um, it's delicious. It's really lovely. She may always wear immaculate pearls, uh, but the Empressa has a secret fondness for silks and spice. Bright, soft, and deeply sensual are the textures of this luxurious, luminous cloak. Okay, so what they're trying to say, I think, here is... Um, Bright and soft, you know, uh, sensual, but it, she's also got this kind of um, kind of a royalness to her, right? Um, okay, so uh, silkness. Um, so they're, they're trying to get across something that's kind of silk and spicy. Um, right now, I I'd like to also um, be able to kind of give this a bit of a test to see how long it lasts, um, because what I don't know 100% yet is how well all of these are going to perform. So I might have to do um, sort of a bit more of a, an updated um, version of just to do a little breakdown of these fragrances, which ones perform the best. Uh, this one is probably quite ordinary. It does have a good strong opening. Uh, I'm presuming it'll do quite well. Um, and with such quality, it's it's hard to imagine that these ones will, will do very poorly, like some of them. You, get, you do get perfumes and fragrances claims that um, have a beautiful opening and then they quickly dry down and there's nothing much there after like you know an hour or something uh, unfortunately that might be the case of one or two of these in this thing um where it sits close to the skin after after a while um it would be unfortunate if that was the case with all of them uh, but i have that that's the case of one or two um however it's still a good powerful scent people will still smell it if they're close enough if they're nearby uh, you'll get some nice whiffs of it throughout the day it'll kind of influence your mood it'll um it'll, it's um Worth getting. I mean, it depends on what, what the prices are on these things. They are a bit expensive because uh, they're kind of old, they're very English, they're very kind of pretty much a niche uh, type of uh, fragrance. So uh, if it's your thing, uh, maybe just get one or two. It can be like a brilliant gift if you're wanting to get some of the just because those bottles are so pretty and there's, there's such a such a vibe and a theme and just that Englishness that goes with these perfumes. So they are very um, interesting things to get into and you might just want to look at some of these reviews and decide which one you want to purchase if you're thinking of getting one of them because um, they are really beautiful perfumes and a lot of um, energy and, and skill has gone into these adorable fragrances. That was Impressa. That's the opening of this little sample box. We'll close here and I hope to see you in another video. And as always, march forward, smelling good.